would it be? Well, it depends now. You know what? It's always Optimus. I mean, Optimus. <laughs> right or right? Optimus now. <laughs> out at you as like, well that was fun or that was hell. Uh, well, I don't know too fond with getting beat up all day, but I think uh, the, the, the sequence that was the most difficult was the giant chase with all the drones and then kind of hanging and getting spun around with the drone and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was fun working with this one. She kept everybody's energy up. Did I? You did. You did. You were enthusiastic. It was, it was the, the aqua. The aqua the aqua. <laughs> well, and I want to get I want to get your input, all of you guys. But um, you know, as your second second time out in the, uh, the Transformers franchise, what what do you think sets the last uh, last night apart from the other Transformers? Well, you know, it's interesting because it really kind of wanted to explore the mythology, you know, and uh, you know, adding you know very exciting new cast members, uh, Isabella, Anthony, uh, Gerard. It really, you know, it was interesting in Laura. You know, kind of putting, you know, me with the fish out of water story being, uh, you know, thrust into this world with all these kind of uptight English people and made for a lot of great humor. But I think uh, the most interesting thing was the, was the mythology and then introducing all the new characters and getting to understand, the, the, you know, the origin story of how Transformers came from. Yeah, we touched on this a little bit earlier, but anyone else care to add on to that? Yeah, no, I think that's, I think Mark's right. It, it is the mythology that we were hoping to get in deeper, and, and it was inspired by our experience in the writer's room, and, and I think that's something we're going to you When you kind of dive into this world, Mark, going to start with that? Can you repeat the question? I was admiring her long hair. She cut all her hair off. <laughs> Oh, it's like, oh no, just like that these are films that pretty much everyone in the family can enjoy. How much of that is an appeal for you as an actor, as a father? And, and well, I can tell you it's, it's, there's pros and cons to it because I had, uh, I had always enjoyed uh, kind of being uh, an enemy when I go to my kid's school. And now I can't go anywhere with kids. I'm sitting at football practice and all of a sudden this two little kid comes up to me and like, don't transform until it gets dark. <laughs> Kids recognize me more than anything now. Uh, and it's a cool thing, it's annoying to my kids, because uh, they like when dad could just be dad and normal when I went to school functions. But it's cool, because I, I end up having some very interesting conversations with people, small, small guy. Yeah. yeah. Does anyone else have a thought about just sort of the, the family component of, of these? Well, you know, we're, we're so grateful to fans and families, and obviously why we wanted to put on our first HasCon is really to give back and give people an opportunity to engage with our brands and Transformers is a brand that doesn't matter where you go all around the world. I still remember one of the first times we went out to, to China when we were first getting ready to do the first Transformers film and you get off the plane there and a bunch of 35 year old guys will surround you to get all the tidbits about the movie because they grew up on Transformers television series in China. And at that time, we had never brought a movie to China before, and uh, that was our first one. You know, so it's just so heartening to me to see how all around the world people love <laughs> the characters and the story, and like we want to give to fans and families, you know, different ways to enjoy the brands. For the little kids, Rescue Bots are probably yeah. you know, more appropriate, and then for in the main line, some of the Robots in the Sky stuff. But obviously, everybody loves the movies that these guys all put together, and that, that's what's so heartening to see just how many people come out to watch these guys in the movie. Mm -hmm. What keeps you coming back to these films? You know, it was interesting for me the first time around, I would work with Michael Bay on Louis Pompain and Gain, and we had a blast, and I really enjoyed the way he makes films. And, uh, you know, it kind of allows me to make the character my own. And, uh, you know, that was a little film, uh, you know, and this was, uh, these are big, but you know what? I learned so much from working with him and getting an opportunity to do something different and obviously, you know, reaching an audience all over the world. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts about uh, working with Anthony Hopkins? And we all kind of shared, like, anecdotes of uh, working with this legend, a uh, uh, living legend and icon. He's just such a sweet, approachable guy. You know, he was really, I, you talk about, she had a lot of enthusiasm. I promise you he had more. He was more excited. He always had this giant grin on his face. Uh, it was really a pleasure to see, and to see somebody his age be as sharp and as prepared as he was. Uh, it was very impressive all around. But I, the, the nicest thing about him was just how sweet and down to earth he yeah. For you guys, is that like the sign of like a good
good fit for this universe when you have someone show up and is, you know, not, like, taking the job seriously, but not taking, you know, not being too serious about the, the world, because you have to have fun with it, you have to love it, you have to be enthusiastic about it. Is that a sign of a good fit? For sure, you know, and I, Michael White is a funny guy, and he likes comedy as well, and so you have to have that side of you, I think, to do well in one of these movies, and, and we all feed on him. The truth is, he's a very unique personality, Johnny, and he really is something that, right from the get-go, it kind of blew our mind that here he was, and, you know, and, and like Mark said, beyond enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. yeah, we were super excited to hear that he had come on board because you know, the Ethereum legends were amazing and you know, all those stories were incredible. But once he comes on, it really makes it authentic. Well, you kind of believe it. It, it legitimizes it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing is, you know, it's like with, it's funny because Michael is very specific. Like he wants comedic elements in the movie, but yeah, obviously everything is very real and played very real. So if you have, you know, I'll kind of have those uh, the comedic actors there for comedy relief. Really, to be on them all the time about making sure that everything that Jack did is real. And then with me, he's always, because he knows that I'm committed, he's always just kind of pushing me to be funnier and go crazier. Um, it's interesting to see how, how he does that, you know? But it's always definitely we want to play it as real as possible. Like yeah. You can come from the craziness in this situation. And, uh, and I think I'm getting a time cue over there. I think we're wrapping up. We're good. Yeah, uh, I think we're wrapping up.